on to the next thing. I'm a paid member as the first as a first timer. How do I get a job? Because most of the jobs are looking for five years of experience. So one of the things that I would highly recommend, Kabi, is to look for entry level positions. Okay, um, entry level positions. You got to start somewhere, and that start is entry level. Okay, so. Let me just show you what I mean by that. It's very simple. If you go, if you can follow along with me if you want, go to Indeed.com. This is just one site, by the way. I use this one all the time because it's just, it's just so vanilla. It's so vanilla and so easy to understand and so straightforward that I just feel like it's a really good teaching tool. Okay, so first off, here I am in Indeed, Indeed.com. You're going to follow along with me, okay? Put your location wherever you're from. Wherever you're from, put that in there. Next thing, put... Uh, there's a couple things you can do here. You can put ISO. There's a ton of keywords you can use to, for this job. ISO uh, entry level. None in, in this area. So, okay, let me search somewhere all over the United States. Wow, it's just really going to town here. All right, so look at this. Information system security officer work. Most of the jobs, if you happen to be on the East Coast, you should know that um, you guys have all the jobs. <laughs> you guys have like 70% of all the risk management framework jobs. I'm not even messing around with you. But um, yeah, so you notice how all of these are Virginia. You can find a job, especially if you have a clearance. There's a couple of things that you have. You may have an advantage. If you happen to live on the East Coast, you have an advantage. If you happen to have a security clearance, watch this. If I put security uh, clearance, if you have a security clearance, you have an advantage. Because sometimes they're looking for a person with a security clearance and they they just get desperate because there's just not that many people who have it. So they'll actually pull you in and teach you if you have this. Now, if you don't have a security clearance, another thing is you, got, you could be eligible for a security clearance. So eligible means you are a U.S. citizen. Eligi eligible. I cannot spell what the damn. Eligible. <laughs> My first and only language, and I can't spell. Um, eligible, yeah. Now, all I did was type in eligible, and um, and they, it immediately knows I'm looking for eligible active. Do oh wait, no, I'm looking for eligible security. Eligible for security clearance is what I'm looking for. But it's coming up with active duty, so okay. But a bunch of ISO stuff came up. Eligible security clearance is what I'm looking for. Eligible security officer. Now these are physical security roles. Okay, here we go. Principal principal means like you're a boss, so you don't want that. Information security specialist in an airport. That's physical security. Okay, this is mixing a bunch of stuff up here. Eligible security clearance. Yeah, here we go. So if you're eligible for security clearance, if this is another, um, another thing that's going to make it so that you have a better chance of getting a job. The best thing you can have, of course, I'm not even going to BS you, is, is experience. There's no replacement for it. But how do you get experience if you don't have it? So you got to go to entry-level positions. Now, if you have zero if you have no IT experience, that is different. If you have some, listen, let me just be very frank with you. If you have some IT experience, meaning you are a system administrator, you worked on databases, you worked on cryptography, you worked on, you have some IT experience, you worked on workstations, whatever, you, you have a very good chance of getting in, into risk management framework. Okay, you have a very good chance. If you have zero IT experience, meaning you've never held a role at a company or a university or a private or, or, a, or a government or anywhere, that is different. That is different. And the reason why is because risk management framework and security is typically not entry level. It's not like literally walk in the door and start flipping burgers. Okay, that's not that, this is not that kind of a job. There's too much stuff at stake. There's too much trust that's involved. There's there's just you're going to be trusted with other people's 
information and assets. You're going to be entrusted to know the secrets of that organization, where the, where the, where the vulnerabilities are. You're going to know where they are. They have to trust you. So for that, they need a professional who has something to lose. All right. That's why cybersecurity is typically not an entry level position. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there right now is watching this saying, Bruce, what are you talking about? I'm an entry level. I, I'm, I'm walking off the street and I'm a cybersecurity person. OK, that's fine. But I'm just telling you, typically, it's not something you walk off the street and you can do this. That's don't lose hope. OK, if you don't have IT experience, if you don't, if you've never done any of this stuff before, there's a couple things you can do. People contact me all the time. And what the last the last time I did a, a couple weeks ago, somebody, an educator contacted me and she said, hey, Bruce, like I really want to get into IT. I want to be getting a risk management framework. I like what you're saying. It sounds cool to me. I want to do it. She's an educator. She had a master's degree in education. She has very little or no IT skills. And I said, hey, you might want to consider becoming a program manager okay program managers work with IT they and in some cases they have to know our they got to know what we're talking about they have to know some of our jargon they don't have to know how to configure a server they don't know have to, they don't have to know how to stand up a Linux box they don't have to know how to reduce threats on a on a weapon system you know what i mean they don't have to do all that but what they do have to do um, is they have to have a certain level of maturity to manage a project and they have to have a certain level of um, technical know-how with things like office you know so so those are some of the things that you would what i would suggest if you are trying to get in a high paying very high skilled high paying job in it one of the things you can do is get a parallel job, which is a project manager position. It pays six figures, by the way. Okay, it's it's not a joke. It's no joke. Program management is no joke. Even without an IT experience, you can actually get in there and you can make upwards of six figures. Look it up. Look it up. It's a it's a damn good job. Um, so yeah, number one, if you don't have any IT experience at all, you got to get IT experience. You got, you have to. Whether you're volunteering at your church, volunteering at your job, if let's say you're you're a system administrator, uh, you're a not system administrator, you're an HR, you're in the HR department, right? You work with people's W twos and stuff. You want to get an IT, but you don't know what to do. You don't want to do a program management work. You don't want to do that. You want to do IT. Okay, well then you got to start from the bottom. Imagine somebody walking in your job, in your profession, off the streets, not knowing anything and wanting the keys to the castle. OK, with cybersecurity, that's what we're talking about. So you, you got to you, if you have no experience, you got to get it. That means you got to go to help desk. Help desk entry level position is what I would suggest if you have zero IT experience, but you want to get technical. Yes. Go into try to entry level positions, volunteer, do it for free because that work that you're going to put in for free, fixing somebody's laptops at some corporation, is not indentured servitude. It's credit that you're building up. Experience. It's experience you're slowly building up and putting on your resume. Building up experience, putting it on your resume. Then that will allow you to level up to another job, a, a higher level IT job. You do that, by the way, while you're working on your Security Plus while you're working on your A-plus certification, an entry-level position with an entry-level certification, then once you have those things, now we're talking about months and years worth of work. This is hard work. This is not something you walk off the street and then suddenly you do it. People are going to entrust. Think, imagine your bank, okay? Let's, if you don't think it's fair, just imagine your bank, whatever, wherever you bank. In the back, they have a security person who, who a cybersecurity person who has no experience, but they know where all the they know where all the vulnerabilities of the bank are. They know where the threats. They don't even know what threats are. They don't know what threats are, but they know there's vulnerabilities. They ran the scan. Do you want that person at your bank as a cybersecurity person who doesn't know what they're doing, who has no experience with IT? No, you don't. Th so I. When you're talking about cybersecurity, you're talking about somebody who's entrusted with the keys to the castle. 
they have to have something at stake. And that means you have to put in the work. As an IT, as you, for me to you, if you're an IT professional, if you're trying to get in cybersecurity, like we ha we're entrusted with something with a lot of information, you know, so you have to have something, you have to have some skin in the game. That means time. That means you, you invested your own time and money to get to the skill set and the skill level that you're at. And you're not willing to risk it by making a mistake or doing something stupid. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. But as you get to learn how to troubleshoot, as you get to learn how these systems work, how to do backups, you begin to learn how to manage your own risk for your own profession. You manage the risk to yourself and ran manage the risk to your organization and the risk to the organization's information. I hope that makes sense to everybody out there listening.